Welcome to episode 107 of the Steady On podcast, Hearts with a Purpose, with me, Angie Bauman, and my guest today, Darlene Larson. Darlene is a life purpose coach who helps women move from pain to passion. This work is Darlene's passion because God has helped her stand up and speak out after being in an emotionally abusive marriage for over two decades. As we talk about her story, I encourage you to listen for three areas that Darlene states are weapons of emotional abuse. They are being ignored, being criticized, and being negated. And these are things that will tempt us to believe that we don't matter, that our life doesn't have purpose, that our voice isn't worth being heard. Which is why I chose this verse from Revelation that Darlene mentioned in the interview as our verse for today. It's Revelation 4.11, and it says in the NIV, You are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power, for you created all things, and by your will they were created and have their being. Friend, God created you. Your life matters. It has meaning and it has purpose. And I don't always find that easy to believe about myself, but I do trust in God's promises. And God says that we are his creation, fearfully and wonderfully made, Psalm 139. And what he creates, he calls good, Genesis 1. I hope you hear that reminder in my conversation with Darlene today. Let's listen in. Hello, Steady On community, and welcome to this podcast episode. I'm Angie Bauman, and with me today is Darlene Larson. Darlene, thank you so much for joining us and visiting with the Steady On community today. Uh, Angie, thank you so much. It's a delight to be with you today. Darlene is a certified life coach. She is a writer, a speaker, and she is the founder of Hearts with a Purpose, which we're going to talk a little bit about here just in a, in, a, in a moment. But if I understand right, Darlene, that's a ministry and a passion of yours that was birthed from your own experiences of pain and trauma and living in an abusive marriage and experiencing the sudden death of loved ones. And so now your work, a part of the work that the Lord has called you to is moving, helping helping move other women or helping other women move with the Lord's grace, right. From pain to passion. Um, so that, so that we can all op- offer hope to others and that, that passion and that work and that goal is just so much what we're a part of here at steady on. And so I'm so excited to listen to a little bit about what the Lord's done and is doing in your life. So will you start us off with just a little kind of peek at your backstory? What, how did, hearts with a purpose come about? What were some of the events in your life that, that led you to think, yes, my story will be inspirational, filled with hope, help. What, where, where did that come from for you? Thank you. Thank you. I'll be glad to, you know, hearts with a purpose. It is my call and God's purpose and plan in my life. Um, um, you stated a life coach. That is one of my certifications, but through my story, the passion was the purpose, Angie. So I'm heavy on a life purpose coach, and that was my first certification, grief loss coach and recovery coach. So my journey was I, in my 40s, I was a woman that uh, taught in a Christian school, loved teaching, loved being with little loves, but I was burnt out. I had done everything to please all and carry all and do everything in the marriage at that time that I was in. And there was a lot, a lot of pain in my story. I could not put the pieces together of what was going on. Um, I had um, done all to please all, but there was this pain and could not figure that out. And that's where I really got stuck. And I'm a former uh, recovery uh, people pleaser and perfectionist. And so I got trapped in the do all to please all. And then I lost my youngest brother to a heart attack at 40 years old age, no warning signs at all. But three years before his death, let me back up, I lost my father to a heart attack, saw no warning signs. So between those bookends of death, God and I went to work on uh, what was going on my pain, but I had to deal with me. I had to look in the mirror and say, you know what, Darlene, let's have no duplicity. Who are you? And so God and I did a lot of cleaning out from jealousy, from Uh, comparison, um, learning how to confront was a big one for me, Angie. I had to learn to stand up and speak out. And I think of the verse in Ephesians about learning to, God wants us to um, speak up on, we're all to grow up into all aspects to the Lord. I think it's Ephesians 4.15. But I, I grew up speaking and standing on the word of God between those bookends of death. 
And standing at my brother's casket, this was the question I asked God was, okay, you took the wrong one. That was supposed to have been me in the casket because I had prayed for years of the emotional pain in my life and my story. Um, in the marriage, I did not know it was emotional abuse. I didn't know that until um, another year after my brother's death, I knew of, I knew of spiritual abuse. I knew of physical abuse. Um, I knew of sexual abuse, but Angie, I knew of no one. And I'm a woman's leader and in the word, um, that lived in anything like me, no one. And, um, it was very, very difficult. So when I stood at my brother's casket, it was okay, Lord, I'm still alive. So what is it you want to do with my life? What is it? What's my legacy? Because Angie, weeks after that, I realized my brother's voice was silenced and not by his choice, but my voice had been silenced because of fear. And so that was 06. So I have been a coach for 16 years. I began within weeks after asking God, okay, enough, no more whiny way. What is my life purpose? Um, I flew out to California and received all my coach training beginning with Life Purpose Coach in 06. And Hearts with a Purpose was birthed with the two heart attacks. And as I became stronger as a woman, Angie, this is a long story in a short way, um, the abuse grew. And when I say it grew, the control, um, it was emotional and mental, uh, very, very strong. I also had three, three love, lovely children that I was not going to leave. Uh, my children are all adopted and that's already a piece in their journey that's hard enough. And so I was the type of woman says, I'm going to stand here and stay until we'll see what God's going to do. So as I became stronger and got received my coach training, started my business, Hearts with a Purpose, 06, 07. Um, then it was 07 that God said, it's time you learn. Matter of fact, it was my own coach said sent a, sent a link, said it's time you learn what you're living in. And um, off I went to counseling and stood strong to expose the abuse and um, the marriage uh, fell apart and uh, it was all my fault. The marriage was 27 years. I did not know it was mental or emotional abuse until year 22. And um, I'm a responsible kind of woman um, and I'm a, a lover of the Lord and the word. I just hung in there for my kids. I was not going to leave them because I knew how it was going to be spun on them. So I chose to gut it out, stayed in counseling for five years, and I literally had to expose the abuse. Hey, friend, I'm cutting in right here to ask you a couple of questions. Do you ever have a heart that is heavy? Do you ever connect with words like ashamed, heartbroken, insignificant, afraid, lonely? Of course you do, because we all experience those emotions from time to time. Susie Crosby is my friend, and she is the co-host of the Bible Talk bonus episodes that drop about once a month here on the podcast. And she and I have joined together to produce a podcast mini-series called Covered, Promises of Hope for Your Heavy Heart. Within each episode of this mini-series, we will dive deep into one of those words that I just rattled off, and we'll use personal stories, Bible stories, and God's promises from Scripture to cover you with His merciful hope for whatever situation you are facing. In addition to those five episodes, you'll also find in the mini series two bonus episodes. Those will be with our ministry friend, Haley Wood. And Haley will share her story of abuse and trauma and loss and wandering and how she learned and is learning to stand firm on the promises of God that help her take steady steps forward. The link to claim this mini series is in today's show notes. And when you subscribe, all the episodes will appear in the podcast directory of your choice. Thank you for listening. Now, back to our show. I want to circle back, yeah, to a couple of things that you said there early on when you were sharing pieces of that story. Then thank you so much, by the way, for sharing some of that, because it's, I, when we have a hard story and the Lord calls us to share I believe that there's something about that, that every time it can cause us to doubt our own reality. And so I'm just, I thank you for your courage today, just, just to repeat the story that I know you've told many times before early on, you said that the Lord 
you said something about the Lord said, no duplicity. Who are you? Uh, would you expand on that just a little bit? I'd Absolutely. love to hear more about what that was like for you. That was, well, I would go to church and I'm, I'm a lover of the word. And I loved uh, being in women's ministry and leading. But what happened for me is I was controlled by, um, it was fear, but I would react. And so years I would go silent and then I swung the other way. I got so angry and that was the stronghold. And I do believe that is a generational stronghold um, that God wanted to break. I felt like God had me in a vice. Um, those of you who don't know a vice, it's a very strong instrument that winds you up. And I was raised on a farm. So I pictured myself in a vice and I said to the Lord, okay, all right, I'm either going to die one angry, bitter woman, or you're going to have to help me with this. And this was in the abuse. And there was a lot going on. And I chose to, I'll just tell you what I did, Angie, I bought a book. And I read the book and thought, oh, forget it. You're, you're wrong. I pitched the author because it was so full of shame. I lived in that environment. I'm not going to have a Christian author shame me. Not. I felt worse. So I threw the book away and said, Lord, we've got work to do. And I'm a teacher and a self-taught. I've devoured books. The word, that's what's kept me alive is the word. But I uh, bought another book and um, phenomenal book, coached myself through how to confront and stand up. And that's where God gave me my gold nugget. God and I and the Holy Spirit is what kept me alive for all of those years because the three weapons there were three main weapons he used on me do you mean weapons against you by the enemy is that what you're referring to well well when emotional abuse angie good question emotional abuse and mental abuse can be very very hard for women that have never ever ever experienced abuse and angie i had never ever ever experienced abuse till i married into it to a man who professed to be a believer and so i was ignored angie i was ignored day after day after day I was criticized day after day, and I was negated. And so that's when I say the weapons. Those were the three emotional and mental weapons that were used on me. That really slaughtered my heart. I feel if it's all right with you, I'd like to stay right there just for a moment, because I feel on my heart, somebody's listening that needs to understand what those look like. Would we Could we expand on those just a little bit and talk to her about what, what is ignored Look, sure. look like? What does criticized look like? What does negated look like? Great. Um, ignored is I wasn't greeted. I wasn't asked how I was where others in the home were. Mm -hmm. um, so I was signal, signaled out as the enemy and I could not figure this out. What is wrong with me? Um, never asked how your day was. Um, never complimented. Uh, and then flip it the other way. So I was criticized, you know, you need to use that pan to fry meat in. And why are you cooking that meat? Uh, why are you wearing that? And how come you got your hair cut that way? So those were the criticizing, being ignored, criticized. And then the negating is whenever a person says to you, yes, I love you, but <laughs> it's, you know, you're going forward and then slap. No. And so it's like, you can't get anywhere. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so negating just, you know, stops you. Thank you for elaborating on those, because I think one of the things that you also said early on that I think is so important, you said you didn't know anyone else was experiencing this, right? You had no, no. you had no knowledge of, or you had no experience of this through a friend or someone else. No. And it, it just reminds me how often, Darlene, this is my experience. I'm curious if you agree. I think you will, but it's okay if you don't, <laughs> but I, how often the enemy uses isolation as such a powerful tool. If we can feel like we're alone in our pain, or if we can feel like we're alone in our struggle, then it makes us less, it can make us less able to, willing to stand up and speak out as you're saying. Yes. Isolation is a tool. The enemy will really start working on women to get them to step away. Um, that was something he tried, but because I was a woman of the word and because God held me to a prayer that I prayed in my early twenties, he helped me to the, that through the Holy spirit to stay in the word. Um, you know, I attribute it all to the Lord in the Holy spirit. Uh, working in my heart and to stay in the potter's will, Angie. 
so you talked about your brother's death being a real turning point for you. Would you say that was kind of the experience that you had that helped you draw a line in the sand and say something yes. has to change? Yes. So what was that yes. like early on? Because I know you said shortly after that, you flew to California, I think you said, and got this certificate. And that was a real part of that. What was the Lord doing in your heart practically, if you will, that helped you move from the day of your brother's funeral, right? To the next day, to the next day. What was that like in those early days and weeks? Good question, Angie. Well, it was, you know, I wanted to go back to the whiny victim way of here we go, another death. And this was the question I asked God, if I'm the next Terrell to die, do I really need to deal with the rest of my story? Which rest of my story was the twenty. Uh, however many years at that time, I could not figure out what this was, why it was always me um, that was blamed. So what God did when I switched it the other way, and I went to Revelations and said, okay, you have given me life and you will me alive. So you have a purpose for my life. And it's, I think Revelations 4.12 or 4.11. And look it up in a couple of different translations. I love the King James version. And so it's like, okay, we're going forward. And I am standing on every verse, stopping the doubting, and we're going forward. And God's always used books in my life, Angie, uh, always. I mean, from his word to strong Christian women, and I have devoured books. And so he put a book in my life within uh, my brother died in February by May, and it was discovering, um, she, Zondervan brought him out, Dr. Katie Brazel, Brazelton's books called um, Pathway to Purpose for Women. I read it. She was doing coach training. It was like, oh my goodness. Now I get it. Uh, flew out that fall to California. And so that was the shift. So the stronger and bolder I came by stepping away, there's ways abusers pull you back in. They're trapped. So you won't step out. Yes. And that was hap that was happening all along the way. <laughs> and I, I was in my own situation too. There's there was so much doubt of my own story because the the one who had who was controlling the narrative, if you will, if I started to question the behavior or started to question something that I didn't want to participate in because that didn't feel like someone, something that someone who loved me would ask me to do. Right. Then there was this like twisting of my own reality. I don't know if you experienced that, but then when it, it made me doubtful to stand up or speak out because I wasn't sure I believed myself. So who else would believe me? Well, and, and I must say women that have lived in abuse. I mean, the self doubt is the way they trap us. The second guessing yeah, it's huge. And I think for any woman that's lived in abuse, that's one of the hardest things to kick and let go of Angie is the second guessing. Yeah. Yeah. I find this true, uh, in it, it trickles in overflows into other areas of my life too. Have you experienced that where you have noticed that you're behaving or making decisions in one way and with a little bit of prayer, uh, thought, pausing, if you will, you re realize actually I'm, beha I'm behaving that way in this circumstance because of how long I behaved that way in the other circumstance, but that's not where I am anymore. Right. Well, I think we have to be very wise um, as we journey forward oh, in abuse, but also not abuse is any of those lies we walk away from. Uh, triggers that are going to happen as we go forward of um, you have to step back and say, why do I want to run to fear? Yeah. I mean, why do I want to go anxious when God's brought you this far? What are you doing? And so I think it's flags, Angie, that we have to flag and ask ourselves, why are you going to react that way? Yeah. You know, and I'm talking about that inner, that fear, that anxiety, yes. that something mm -hmm. triggers and I think that's going to be something that I mean, I lived in it 27 years that I have to be very sensitive. I, I have my same coach that's coached me through it still with me uh, five years, Angie, five years. It took me to from therapy Yeah, <laughs> five years. So I've spent the years in that chair and learned. Um, I think mm -hmm. that's so generous of you to share also, because there are, there are so many of us who are called to help, to serve, to lead, to teach while we are 
being helped and served and led and taught. Right. Mm -hmm. I, because right. I think, yeah. Right. And so I think I say that to the one who might be listening to say, well, I sort of have to get my stuff together or I have to overcome all this before I can be of any use. And that's just not true at all. That's a oh, lie. No. Mm -hmm. no. And that's a really good comment because I remember telling the Lord, Angie, at one time <laughs> I said to him, Lord, just put me in one of those phone booths. <laughs> those old phone booths. And once we get this all figured out, then I'll then, come out. Uh -huh. But you know, Angie, you said, what were some of the signs or the ways God was moving me? It's always, I've always been in women's Bible studies and I've always, um, the teaching is so his gift. So I've taught, I've led. Well, during that journey, I was also um, in 04, my brother died in 06, but in 04, I went to uh, the pastor and we had a new church building. And I said, I know, I believe God wants me to start a woman's class. Um, I'd be teaching it. And, and Angie, this is where I wanted the duplicity to stop. I said, and I know what book I need to start teaching on. I need to talk about anger because I knew I, I'm so a woman of integrity that I, I couldn't, I couldn't, uh, I needed to talk about the anger, but I couldn't tell women yet why I was angry. <laughs> I did share the sin and what it was like, but I couldn't get to the backstory yet. And um, because of the integrity. So um, I, I hope, you know, that just is all woven in together. Yeah, no, I think it's so important to be able to say, this is a process for me too. Here's what I've learned. Absolutely. I would love to share with you what he's doing right now. Yeah. I'd love mm -hmm. to know what he's doing for you right now. Let's get better together. So often when I'm leading something, I call myself a player coach because I'm like, I might be putting together like something to share with you or putting together, I've gone to the word and this is what he's told me, but I'm very much uh, with you in this process, mm -hmm. whatever yeah. this process happens to be for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So when you talk to women who are struggling with being stuck in the work that you do, what are some of the questions that you ask them to help them identify sort of the underlying negative thought patterns or beliefs, those things that where they're stuck, right? What kind of questions can we ask ourselves or what kind of questions do you ask for us to be able to pinpoint that what's going on here? Well, it's really important that you have to evaluate and examine your life right where you're at. You know, we can't, you know, go to, a, go to a mall and you go, you want to get to a Starbucks, let's say, but you're in a brand new mall. So what do you have to do? You have to go to the map board and say, okay, I'm here and I want to get over there. And so as a coach, that's, you know, in my own story, Angie, I had to start right where I was at, at my brother's casket and saying, I'm not going forward this is really, something's wrong here. What is it? But I, but I sense God's calling me to teach and speak. And I really think there are books in me. So Lord, you know, I've got a step. And so you just take one step and another step and you get in that lane. So I would ask a woman, you know, what are you thinking about? You know, especially if I just started with her is what, what do you sense the whisper is? What's the call? What's the nudge that God keeps nudging you forward? And you don't know the how, that's okay right now. But you sense the call, the whisper. I sensed the whisper, Angie. It was the whisper to stand up, stand up and step through the wall. And the wall was the wall of fear that was built around me. How do we, um, as women who can identify that we're stuck, right? We know you said earlier, I knew I had a lot of pain, yeah. but I didn't know how, like, I, I didn't know where it was coming from. I didn't really know why I thought it was me. What are some baby steps we might be able to take to help us understand that? Why? Good question. Um, is number one, start talking to someone, um, pray that it's a wise God fearing woman and definitely female to female. Um, to start talking to someone about your story, about the pain, about, I don't get this, do you? Then definitely head into counseling. Now I tell women, and I speak this and write it, Angie, it's really important with women that are in any type of abuse that you make certain your therapist gets abuse. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, 
That is so, so important. Not all therapists understand abuse and they don't understand emotional abuse and they don't understand narcissists. They don't. So be wise there. Um, I would also suggest to a woman that she takes, after she talks to someone, she just takes the next step as God's unfolding her. Yeah. But most importantly, Angie, is that she's a woman that opens up the word. If she is a woman that's been seeking God, open up the word, open up the word, own the very first verse that you sense God wants you to own. Like I understand you, Psalm 139 verses one and two. I I know you're sitting down, Angie and Darlene. I know when you're standing up. And so you own those verses and you begin to make more verses go higher in your life. And all those lies that you've lived in, they start going away. But you've got to shift and start growing the truth. In 40 days during this, Angie, I lost my last parent. Um, the abusive husband walked out on me. Our house went into foreclosure. And my three teens, chose to live elsewhere. I became parentless, spouseless, homeless, and childless within 40 days during exposing the abuse. I think that's really important. And thank you for sharing that because I do, I do issue this or lift this as encouragement. Actually, it will probably get worse before it gets better. Um, as we begin to really identify the truth, it, it's actually getting better, but for a little while it will feel it can I think it a lot of times feels like it's all falling apart and we should have just kept our mouth shut. And, um, and so I just lift that up. You can do this, my friend, if whatever this happens to be, if the Lord is calling you to stand up as Darlene has said here and speak out and to, and to claim and own and speak your truth, um, he will walk you through having to move. He will walk you through repairing relationships with people who at first don't understand if they can be repaired and if they should be repaired. He will walk you through finding the right person to be able to talk to and mentor who believes you and will support you. Um, it doesn't happen instantaneously, but he is faithful and he will Amen. do it. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Yeah. He mm -hmm. is. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, I, you've, you've talked to us about several verses that are really important to you already, but I'm wondering, do you have any more, anything that's kind of just the center of hearts with a purpose or something you cling to? Because I know that you, you sound very strong and you sound very sure, but I undoubtedly you have tough days still too. And so what do you cling to darling? Um, John 15, five B apart from me, you can do nothing. And Angie, that goes way back in my story. Um, my early twenties, that verse. And um, when everything was collapsing, the tsunami, and I describe it, it was a tsunami for me, um, that it was apart from God, you can do nothing. So that verse is huge for me. Um, I am, Angie, it's only the word in the Holy Spirit that kept me alive. It really is. I, I lived in, and I write it this way, it was a prison cell where the bars that were moved on me were of fear. And I lived in that for 22 years before I knew it and stayed in it another five to expose and to see what God was going to do. God is my strength. He'll be yours. He is my shield. Verses too many, but Psalm 139, the entire Psalm, uh, Ephesians 4 and 5, phenomenal books. Um, um, revelations, the verse I quoted about, he wills us to exist. He breathes life into us. And when, I mean, I've watched three, no, I've lost three family members. I've been, I was with my mom when she took her last breath, Angie. So I've seen death up close. I've stared it in the face. I put myself in the casket and I reversed my life. I said, okay, I want to leave a legacy and I want my life to matter. So we've got work to do. Yeah. And I believe his word. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. Do. And where, whenever you have those moments that it's, that's the Lord, I think it's so easy for us to believe it's too late. Like too much time has passed or what, you know, you were in a, a decades long, you know, you were in a, this marriage. And so I think it's easy to grieve and maybe for a time, right. To grieve what is lost in terms of time, but today is a day to make a change. Today Absolutely. is a day to get strong. This has been fantastic. And before I let you go, I always like to ask the guests that, that uh, grace us with their time. 
Is there anything, I love to share resources. Is there anything at all right now that you are reading or watching, listening to something that you're studying that is just bringing you joy, keeping you connected to God, encouraging you anything at all? Well, definitely, um, definitely his word <laughs> every day, ladies, make sure you open it up. I, um, I have the old, my old devotional that's pretty beaten up is streams in the desert. Love uh, I've pulled this off the shelf. I don't know how many times. And I tell women to date your books and to date your, so, you know, and I've read this one so many times, but I knew you were going to ask me that question. So I grabbed this one love off. It. Um, and Angie, I'd love if, it, if it's all right, that women, if they choose, go to Hearts with a Purpose, uh, they can receive my first devotional book uh, with a, in a PDF. It's on my website free, and it's available to, uh, as a download if they would like it. Darlene can be found at heartswithapurpose.com. That is linked in today's show notes. All of where you can find and follow her on social media is linked in today's show notes. And so I just really encourage you, friend, to uh, check out other things that she has, because uh, we really appreciate you sharing these pieces of your story to encourage us. And you've given me and I know those who are listening a lot to think about today. So thank you very much for joining us and spending this time with me. Well, thank you, Angie. And God bless you in everything you're doing as well to promote the truth. Amen. Thank you, thank you Darlene. I appreciate that very much. And thank you for listening, friend. Until next time. Peace. In all honesty, I'm not crazy about the concept of us searching for our purpose because as believers, we know our purpose. It's to remain in Jesus, John 15, 5. The Enduring Word commentary puts it this way, we exist to give glory and pleasure to God. That's our purpose. But in that abiding in Jesus, God will use our lives to bear fruit. He will invite us to partner with him in kingdom work. And as we allow him to fill our lives with his abundance, that abundance will overflow onto others like rivers of life. That's why we must know and live our purpose to love him with our everything. Revelation 4.11, again, this time from the message, Worthy, O Master, yes, our God, take the glory, the honor, the power. You created it all. It was created because you wanted it. Thank you, Darlene, for shining light on this truth for us today. Next week, Elise Smith will join me on the podcast. Elise will be here to talk about ways that we can overcome that negative voice in our head, the one that she calls the inner dream stealer, that voice that sabotages anything we hope to accomplish. If you have an extra second today, please consider rating and or reviewing the podcast. That does help other people find us. And I thank you so much for listening. I pray wherever your day takes you, you are walking in the confident knowledge that you are a beloved, cherished child of God. Peace.